Hi guys, Carl here from Fjellraven and uh, today I have Sophie from uh, our Fjellraven Classic organization. Hi! Uh, today we're going to talk about trail ethics. What does that mean to you? Uh, trail ethic has uh, a lot of uh, meanings but I would say the first one is uh, how to behave on the trail and along the trail but also in the nature that are just outside the trail like campsites and places like that yeah yeah so so it's like a fundamental base uh, set of uh, guidelines how to behave in nature pretty much yeah in nature but also uh, to other people that you meet yeah. on the trail and animals plants flowers uh, etc and the cool thing I think is quite global right it kind of applies to anywhere where you're out in nature around the world, pretty much. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it, we all have to think about how we act and it doesn't matter where we are. No. Uh, I mean, of course, it depends a little bit if we are in a national park, for example, or in a protected area, there might be special restrictions. Yeah, then they come on top, like the, the restrictions uh, that apply for this specific national park or nature reserve or area where you are. But but. The, the trail ethics is like the minimum standard. Yeah, but uh, I hope that we can raise the minimum standard quite a lot. Yeah, so recent years uh, I have found that uh, the trails, the actual trails that we're walking on are quite damaged and then they're getting uh, worn out. Yeah. Um, more, and more, more and more people are coming out and uh, they don't really know where to put their feet. So we can actually talk a little bit about how to to walk and where to walk you know uh, leave uh, nothing but footprints but I mean what is a trail yeah that's a huge problem actually because it's enough if only 25 people uh, put their foot in one single spot they can ruin a, a fantastic uh, species of a flower or a plant or something uh, and they might to never a, recover it starts to become a new trail yeah so how, how should you behave then as a trekker um, as a trekker, you should always pick a trail that is already existing, not break new trails, that's important. If there is a footbridge, uh, footbridge or some other kind of uh, uh, arranged uh, uh, material that is made to, to sustain the trail, you should walk there, not to wear out the trail too much. Talking about uh, foot bridges, this is a quite interesting and uh, clear example, right? Yep, here is a perfect example of what happens. There is a good trail and probably someone has found that it's being used too much and they wanted to protect the nature and they built a footbridge here, but uh, very few people use the footbridge, so they keep using the trail. It's really uh, responsibility that I think we have as, as users of trails to, to actually stay on trail and use the, the material that's being used to build a trail. Yeah and another thing also is which is very common is when you come come to a, a, on the path and you see that there's a wet hole and then hikers normally go not straight into the hole or across the hole they, t they walk around and what happens then is that the hole just gets wider and wider and you wear out the nature more and yeah. more and more uh, so if you pass a hole like that just <laughs> Do it. Just try to go straight ahead across as much as possible and not walk on the sides to make it wider and wider because that will definitely wear out the nature a lot. Yeah, and here is, I think is a perfect other example of a really well beaten track, super heavy used and, and you see how the, the rocks start actually to grow up through the ground and uh, it's harder to find nice uh, places to plant your feet. If uh, this trail not would have been in the forest, it would like probably mountain, have been, yeah. yeah, a mountain trail or something, it would have been wider. People would have uh, gone outside to find an easier, easier way to walk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Another situation where you uh, affect the, the ground is, of course, when you pitch your tent. Maybe you would find a tent spot, uh, something looking like this, but uh, what, what would you think about this? Well, it looks good at the first sight. I mean, it's not, uh, it's uh, quite flat and it uh, looks soft and nice. But the thing here that is that no one have been here before and pitched a tent and it's not used. So it's not a broken up uh, uh, ground. 
So that would be quite bad choice. Yeah. Yeah, because apart uh, from the fact that we actually are in a national park, so it actually is a ban on camping right here. But another option is to find a, a ground where it's already you have see that someone has been camping and you can see where that it's an established campsite. Yeah. But uh, ideally, uh, not to uh, leave any footprint from the tent, what would you look for? What kind of ground would you want to pitch your tent on? Uh, actually, rocks. Yeah. You never leave any, any trace. Uh, and on, on sand. sand banks or where there's uh, some kind of gravel or... Not, yeah. where, where it's not much growing, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. When pitching the tent, it's very common that uh, people use uh, rocks or uh, pieces of wood or something else to secure the tent, so it's uh, stable and good pitched. But uh, one thing that can be uh, good to think about is to always be very thorough and put those things back so that you don't leave rocks and pieces of wood just lying around on the campsite. Always put them back on the same spot. But, but if you find yourself in a situation then where, where there are no trails and you need to uh, cross an area with, with very few trails or no trails, well, how would you think then? Uh, then I would uh, try to find a ground which is not uh, so vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, like rocky terrain, for example, and take a, a short stretch as possible. Yeah. And, and also maybe spread out if you are in a group. So you don't walk uh, in this, put your feet in the same exact spot. So you disperse a little bit uh, over an area. Yes, definitely. And that's a little bit uh, strange because we just said to stay yeah. on the trail. But in that case, you can spread out a little bit because then you would leave less trace and not so many people will follow exactly those trails and will make a new trail. Yeah, you're less li likely yeah. to break new yeah. trails that yeah. way. Yeah, for sure. And I always say that, uh, you know, the fastest one on the trail need to be the kindest. So like if you're running, you need to be more considerate towards walkers and yeah. uh, trekkers. And if you're on a mountain bike, you need to be even more considerate to, to the people that you meet. Yeah. Uh, that, that's my philosophy into that. It's a good, good way of thinking. Um, but but uh, taking, I mean, making it easy for others not to break new trails should be the guiding principle. Yeah. Yeah, so like to summarize, I mean, in Sweden we have the, the right of public access. Yes. Which uh, kind of uh, embraces trail ethics in a way. And I mean, in a very short format, it says like, uh, don't disturb anything and don't destroy anything yeah. on the trail. Um, and with each liberty there is always a responsibility yeah and i think that is what it comes down to to be responsible when you're out and take care of the nature because we have only like one plant yeah leave no trace thanks for watching and if you like this we have uh, also other films on trail ethics that you can uh, watch and uh, then you as usual click like and subscribe and we uh, hope to see you out on the trail real soon